Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what I want to just explain is cracks in a brand new uh, stucco finish. This is a cementitious uh, stucco color finish. What does that mean? It's like a brick. Cementitious means when it gets wet, it darkens. Anyhow, we've got a few hairline cracks, and yeah, we, we did this a uh, little more than a year or so ago. But I wanted to point out, because my number one call, folks call me daily, and folks email me daily with, gee, I just had a stucco contractor do our home, and a month later we have cracks appearing. What did he do wrong? Well, I'm not trying to protect myself or other stucco contractors, but he probably did nothing wrong. It's movement. Movement will cause uh, hairline cracks like this. I, don't, I doubt the camera can see this, but it's a hairline crack. Um, I'll explain something. In Bay Farm Island, in Alameda, there were 30,000 homes that all have cracks because the ground is moving and there were at least 60 different contractors on the jobs. I kept that newspaper article that I, I read about 30 years ago specifically for that point. It's not about who did it, it's, uh, it's movement. Say, can you see the ground in the sunshine, Jay? Uh, right here we have the ground. The concrete's cracked like an egg. Uh, I mean, there are certain things that, not to again make excuses, that's four and a half inches on the ground and it's cracked like an egg where you can stick 15 quarters side by side. Here we have, let me, let me show you this, um, we have a hairline crack here and what, let me find one that I haven't done. Okay, say like this one for example, um, and again there are many different reasons why this is an addition. We had a house built next door, two-story. We don't need to show you that, but there's a brand new house. It's trucks going by, movement. The ground is shifting. Uh, here we have an addition. And can, like say the addition here, can we put a, an expansion joint there? Yes, absolutely. Does it help? Absolutely, it helps a little bit. Uh, we've done jobs, uh, commercial projects, where we've installed 30 to 50, and if the ground moves, it is still gonna crack. Anyhow, what I'm getting at is, we have a hairline here. What, what I first did is, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing a fellow like me can do re in regards to a hairline crack except, say, leave it alone, even if it's a brand new one, because the paper is still intact, and that's what waterproofs the house. If the house is moving, and again, we cannot tell the structural integrity of any foundation. We don't know. This particular house had two shears on it, it and both of them were done kind of cheesy, but it is what it is. The idea is, I'm going to show you one way right now where we can repair it, but will they come back? This particular crack here, what I've done is I've, I've cleaned it because it's about a year and a half old, and I've put a little bit of caulking in it, and all I want to do is put the caulking in that crack and put my hand on it, and then I use a brush here to score it a little bit. Now, what that is doing is it's pushing this caulking into this crack. You can see it already has fiber mesh tape here. That is, that is about the best a fellow like me can do. And while we're on the subject, first thing we do is we lath it and we staple off every six inches. Every six inches per stud on down with staples. That is approved by the city. Seven eighths of the staple leg is in the stud to hold per square inch the amount of weight. We scratch it, we hydrate the scratch coat, allow at least a week, sometimes 48 hours. We put the brown coat, we hydrate that or moist cure it. Some t most times two weeks, then we apply the color finish. That's about the most a fella can do in my line of work to s prevent or to s slow it down from moving. But will they move? Yes. Is this fiber mesh tape here going to stop it again? More than likely not. It's not going to stop a 20 ton building from moving. It's just not that purpose. Anyway, we've applied a little bit of caulking here and we're going to give it a day. We're going to come back. I'm going to hose this wall down, and by the way, this is a special order uh, La Habra Lifestyle color. The more pigment in the color, the tougher it is to match the finish. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come back. We're going to hose this down, hide, just completely drench it. I'm going to apply a little color here and refloat it into this float finish, and that will blend it all in somewhat. It's not going to make it perfect. And I told the folks here, and they said, Kirk, you were real good. You explained to us that we probably will get some hairline cracks. Thought I'd explain to you folks, it's, it's not always, I mean, for all the calls I get uh, daily on my email, that's, that's good and bad about YouTube. It puts our name out there where folks recognize our abilities, but it also gets me 10 emails per day of folks saying, gee whiz, I got a house and it's cracking and these guys are 
animals, they're, they're incompetent. It's not always the case, guys. As long as they did everything which I explained earlier. Anyway, when we come back tomorrow, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, wet this. We're going to put our color finish over. I'm going to show you a simple way to repair them. Okay, guys, let's talk about color. That's what really separates the 10-year to the 20-year guys who have time in. You really got to know what you're doing when, when we get to this stage. All right, we've applied this a couple years ago. What we're going to do now is we're going to match this color as well as the finish. Now, what color is this? Unfortunately, it's a lifestyle color. Now, those just mean double the pigment, triple, quadruple sometimes. Here's the standard. What you do is you take a 100-pound sack, Mix it in two buckets, put the color in back and forth, get your color consistency right so when it's mixed, it should match on the money to the wall. And that matches pretty well. Um, there's a technique to this. Now, what I'll generally do is I'll, I'll spread this area right here and I'll float it. I'll spread this area and float it. Or me, seeing that they painted this wall right here, and the only time you can see that paint is when it's wet because when it's dry, it blends in perfectly. Me and Jay, we're so fast at this that we could actually spread right in here and spread this whole lower wall just as quickly as doing this right here. I want to show you in the front of the house a modeled look. All right, guys, I'm in the front of the house. I want to try to prove a point here as far as color variations. You can call it modeled. You can call it acid wash. I've heard the term a hundred different ways. All right, can, hopefully the camera will show this. There's an area here that's uh, varied in color. It's varied in color. Why is it varied in color? Disregard the little bit of cracking. Uh, but why is it varied in color? Well, it's varied in color because of the lifestyle color. Instead of a two pound color packet, it's a five pound or a seven pound or a 10 pound bag. With that much color pigment in it, it is tough to get a cementitious finish like a painted surface. It just won't happen. And here's a point that, uh, a good point that La Habra makes. They show three houses and every one of them have varied colors on them because it's one thing to do a small wall but when you get to a two-story wall it will be varied and the houses they show here are varied for a reason that's that's the um, uh, drag about using so much pigmentation all right guys back to what i originally was talking about i'm using the but jay mix me up with standard colors you can do this right here wife asked me, what are you going to do today, baby? And I said, brain surgery on a wall. She laughed and I said, well, what we're doing takes a lot of practice. It's uh, really got to know what you're doing. Um, anyway, now what I'm doing is I'm taking a dry float, guys, and I'm blending it into the, the wall. Now the dry float uh, just brings out the aggregate, brings out the sand to match the finish that they already have. Now say we take it like so, and then we get the texture just right inside. Now technically with uh, any of the standard colors, this will work fine, and some finishes work better than others. However, Jay and I are going to go the extra mile on this, and because they painted this, and you can see that paint right there, when that dries, it's going to, well when it's wet you'll see the painted surface. What we're going to do is, because this is the area, the worst on the house that had the addition built, I'm going to take it right in here and come up to here and do the entire wall. It takes us an extra few minutes, but that's what I would, I, I prefer to do that. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over the, the, the paint where they've uh, boo-booed. It's tough to do the paint just right, guys. All right, so what we do is we cover their paint, and then we just start from the bottom and spread it. I'll spread a, two more hawkfuls to give you an idea of what the heck I'm talking about. Then Jay's going to put that camera away, and he's going to spread, and I'll just do the simple stuff and float behind him. Now, again, the product we're using is a 2030. I'm sorry, 1620. That just means it's the heaviest mesh there is, heaviest sand. So I'll put that on right here. And yes, this area right here where I've just applied the finish to, I'm just going to disregard that and go right over it because we're going to do the entire lower portion of this. What does that mean? Watch. 
I'll take it. Come down. I'll take it here. Come down. I'll go right over what I did. I just did that to prove a point, guys. Now, what we'll do is I'll show you how I float this. And because, because of what we're doing, it's actually a two-man job. It's not a one-man job. So I'm going to put this down. Jay's going to pick it up in a minute. And I'm going to take my float and go over where they messed up with a little too much paint and fix their own little mistake there. And this actually takes the practice. I'm going to tie into the existing wall. Take it and tie into the existing. Will there be a color variation or a difference? Absolutely. But that's the nature of uh, the lifestyle colors anyhow. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and even today, I still get folks calling me saying, Jay Kirk, uh, can you make my house have the um, acid wash look or they'll name a whole bunch of things? And I'll say, absolutely. All we have to do is go with a lifestyle color which is overpigmented and use a lot more water here and there or a lot less depending on how molded they want. Anyway, what we're going to do is Jay's going to go ahead and spread this and we'll show you the, the final finish after he's done spreading this. It'll be about 10 minutes. Okay guys, the drag about doing before and after videos is you got to come back and do the after. We're actually heading to my sister, the Basquezes, for a barbecue, so I thought we'd stop in real quick. I asked everybody, hey, who wants to see what we've done? Everybody said, not me, so we're here anyway. This is one of the toughest colors there is to uh, feather in, but we got it done. Made it look nice. It's uh, earthquake country, guys. We're in California. Shit happens. It can crack. But anyway, even the toughest colors, you can get it out if you know what you're doing. From myself and my wife, we appreciate you folks watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching, and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below, and also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one.